All right, so I'm down here working on a Beckett burner. Um, yesterday, we had to refill the tank and do a restart because um, it ran out of oil. We're back today because um, when it's running, um, the flame will kick in and out um, over and over very quickly. So I'll show you what that looks like here. I haven't seen this before. Now my first thought was maybe it needs to be bled again if there's still air in it. So I just bled it, was getting solid oil. My next thought is, well, when you run out of oil, sludge from the bottom of the tank can go through the line and clog the nozzle. So we're gonna change the nozzle and see what happens. Okay, so to take out the electrodes and the nozzle, all you got is two screws there. You gotta loosen, move those tabs. Take those two screws off, all the, whatever you call that there, the nut, you don't screw those. And then this nozzle then just slides out of there. And as you can see, it's very dirty, the nozzle, and then there's junk real close to the electrodes too. So we're gonna put a new nozzle on there, screw it in, uh, pretty snug. We'll clean off the electrodes, and then um, we're also going to blow through this with brake clean before we put in the new nozzle. Make sure this whole tube is clear. Um, put it back in and see how it runs. I think uh, we're also going to put in a oil, a test gauge, PSI gauge, right into there uh, to check oil pressure going in. Um, and I'll show that in just a second. Okay, I cleaned off the electrodes, put my new nozzle in. To do that, you put one wrench here and here, three quarter inch and five eighths. And then uh, to tighten it, to snug it up, you just push them towards each other to get enough um, torque on it to tighten it. This should be pretty snug. Um, but you can see, much cleaner. I have my PSI gauge hooked in here, just like that, so I can read how much pressure I'm getting. I should be reading around 100 PSI coming out of the oil pump. I'm gonna look inside there to see how my retention head looks. And if it's dirty, it is a little dirty, so I'm gonna take a rag in there and clean that out. Now what I'm gonna do to test the oil pressure is close this because these electrodes will be live. And then I have my oil, it's dead headed here. So that means it's going nowhere after this gauge. So I can turn on the burner and read my oil pressure since I bled the air out. should drop, uh, drop about 20 PSI and hold. If it keeps dropping, then there's some kind of leak somewhere or air leak. A fitting's probably not tight, but that's holding and looking good. So I'm not gonna mess with that. All right, to put this back in, I just maneuvered the nozzle line in there and then the side goes through this hole right here in the end of the tube and this nut just screws on there you can just do hand tight for these and then I'll put this flare nut right onto there and tighten that with a 7 16 okay I have this tight now I'm gonna close this up that right there is the CAD cell. That should be clean too, just like it is. I always want to double check that. But I'm going to close this, make sure no wires are getting crimped. 
close these here. Tighten that up and then we'll test it. Now, I should have said this before, but it's very important if you're replacing the nozzle, make sure you're replacing it with the right size for your unit. Um, usually whatever's in it before is what you can put in it, but sometimes whatever's in it could have been the wrong one. So it's always good to double check uh, what size your furnace should be using. But in our uh, case, it's a 180B, so one gallon per hour, and then the angle is 80 degrees uh, with the B. Um, so that's important to keep in mind. Uh, now we're gonna test this. It's on reset, so I'm gonna hit that and we'll see what happens. So it's still doing it. So I just heard something a little differently this time, is when every time the flame is kicking on, on, off, on, off, you can hear actually the contactor inside of the primary kicking in and out, um, the electrical switch inside, um, which is telling me pretty much your primary is bad. It's still good we replace the nozzle. That should be done um, at least once a year, and it's been a while and it was pretty dirty, so that's good. But we're gonna throw a new primary on, and then it should be solid, um, not kicking in and out like it is. So we'll see what happens with that. Okay, so I have the power off to the furnace, and before I get too hasty in replacing the primary control, what I wanna do and should have said is um, we need to check the power going into the primary because it's two things we could have going on here. Either the power itself going into the primary, this black wire here, uh, right here, coming over up from above. This black wire, the power going in could be cutting in and out, or it could be have, you know, have all the power it needs and the box itself is bad, um, cutting in and out. So we're gonna test that right now. Okay, so I very carefully put one, one of my um, voltmeters test leads onto the neutral, one onto the positive, turned the power on, and I had 118 volts constant, which means it's the primary. So we're going to put our new one on here and wire that together. Uh, pretty much just exactly the way this one was. So if you're replacing parts, take pictures of the wiring before you take it off so you know where it goes. Uh, make your life much easier. So I have this new primary control mounted. Um, the wiring in it is very simple. You just need your yellow wires coming from the CAD cell, going to the FF terminals on the outside. All the neutrals inside go together. The black power coming in goes to your black wire on your primary, just like this. So this is your power coming into the primary, neutral, and you'll have a neutral wire for your motor, igniter, and solenoid if you have one. Um, and then you, while you have the neutral, you also have the other leg of each of these, which would go to orange. So you should have three uh, wires connected to orange. You'll have four to white because you also have neutral coming in. So neutral, 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 neutral. And then you'll have one going into black, which is your power coming in from the aquastat. Um, lastly, you wanna make sure if it has a jumper on the TT terminals, to pull that out and put it on your new primary or it won't run. Uh, now we're gonna test it to make sure I was right. Give it power. Let's see what it does. Beautiful. There it is. in and out. So we're done. Um, 
They can seem a little complicated. You just have to follow you know, each step and how these work. Um, oftentimes it is the primary that goes bad, but not always. So that's why um, we always just check to make sure it has good oil, spark, um, good airflow, um, and make sure that the nozzle's not clogged. But there you have it.